So, Carl, this video is once again sponsored. It is, yes, by a gentleman called Dylan Burrows, who wrote a book that you should go buy and read after you watch this video about the alien. Yee. Yeah. Alien. I'm being paid to talk about the alien. You love the alien. I'm being paid to talk about it. Thanks, Dylan. This is great. The alien, or the xenomorph, if you think that sounds cooler, which it absolutely does, is a fictional creature that has appeared in countless forms of media. As such, much has been revealed about the alien outside of the movies it has appeared in. For example, did you know it can read your mind? So does that mean it's intelligent? Uh, the alien's intelligence is actually the subject of much debate, because when I say the alien can read your mind, that kind of suggests that it has a, you know, a higher intellect um, than you'd be led to believe, because in a lot of the movies it seems to act on pure instinct and is like more animalistic in nature, whereas in other movies uh, they are quite smart. The alien is very intelligent and can formulate plans, and it seems to demonstrate a rudimentary but nonetheless lethal intellect. So, do you have an example of the alien being an idiot? I do, yes, and it is um, the reason that I fucking hate Prometheus and Covenant. And it is the scene in Alien Covenant where the alien, um, apparently the deadliest creature in the entire universe, for no apparent reason, leaps into the waiting metallic jaws of a pneumatic claw, allowing itself to be trapped like a jaguar-sized spider beneath a glass. And it's just, fuck that movie so hard for what it did to the alien, because that's not even the stupidest fucking thing the alien does in that movie. Because I think either before or after that scene, they're talking about how the aliens try to break into their ship. It's like, I've never seen anything like it before. Like, it's, it's, it's so scary, it's so intelligent. How do we stop it? And it cuts to the alien crawling over the exhaust port, uh, allowing itself to be burned for no reason. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> It's like, oh, the alien is like one of the most terrifyingly adept hunters on the planet. And then you go to that scene from Covenant again, where to get into the ship, it just headbutts the window. I got eyes on it. It's right fucking in front of me. <laughs> That's it. That's its plan. That's the game plan of the alien. And then you compare that to like an admittedly just a shitty film starring the alien, Alien Resurrection where several aliens are trapped inside a holding cell, and to escape, they utilise their own acidic blood. And you see these two things and think, how is this the same creature? How is the same creature that figures that out the same one that <laughs> willingly allows itself to be captured by the most obvious trap in film history, and then thinks the best way to get through a bulletproof window is to headbutt it? So, yeah, it is pretty weird that in one movie the alien comes across as an idiot and in another movie it comes across quite intelligent, so... It's yeah, really it is odd. very strange. <laughs> and um, this apparent discrepancy has um, uh, been explained to a degree um, in various pieces of aliens-related media. Um, for example, a common thing posited um, in Aliens Extended Universe material is that um, the intelligence of an alien is directly correlated to the intelligence of the base host. And the commonly used example for this is the alien from Alien 3, um, which originated from a dog, which is a lower life form than a human, uh, which is used to explain why the alien in that movie is more animalistic in nature. And it also allows me to talk about the fact that when they were making that movie, they initially thought about putting an alien in a dog costume to play <laughs> the alien. <laughs> And then um, scrap that idea when they realised that they couldn't not make the alien look adorable. I was just imagining those dogs, you know, when you put shoes on dogs and they walk really awkwardly. I was just imagining it like that. Just like, you know, the thing is, that'd be scary for me if I saw an alien who just walked like this, like a spider on ice. <laughs> I'd shit myself. Getting back to the Aliens Extended Universe and the materials contained therein. And the writers for those are generally quite smart when it comes to discussing any specific facts about the alien and are always sure to have these things like theorised by characters and never explicitly say whether they're true or not. Because even the people writing shitty aliens novels and tie-in comics know that the alien is scarier when you know nothing about it. Like we keep saying in a lot of 
uh, videos where we talk about horror films, monsters are scary when you don't know them, you don't understand them. Yeah, monsters are always scary when you don't know exactly what their deal is because the unknown is scariest. It's almost like that's like true of all of humanity and has been since we've had the ability to formulate thoughts. But anyway, this all said, there is one alien that we do know for a fact possesses intelligence far greater um, than the base aliens, and that is the alien queen. So is this where the psychic powers come in? Uh, yes, it is, because uh, while the movies where the Alien Queen features have showed it to be you know, quite resourceful, very cunning, very intelligent in a ruthless way, um, comics and novels have expanded upon this and said that the Alien Queen isn't just smart, um, it is dangerously so, to the point where it has the ability to communicate telepathically with other aliens in the environment almost instantaneously. And also, if it wants to, can communicate telepathically with humans. Yes, and it's able to like <laughs> read the thoughts and emotions of people. And even, if it Ooh. really, really wants to, give them nightmares about the alien. Oh, that's terrifying. And there are some references to this in the movies, like in Alien Resurrection, where you have Ripley um, feeling the pain of the alien queen as she goes through childbirth, because they have like, you know, a psychic, empathic link. I hear them, they're so close. It's the queen. She's in pain. And then you have Alien 3 where a guy goes insane due to the alien and worships it as a god and says that he can see it in his mind. But again, they're quite clever with that because they never explicitly say whether the alien itself is doing that or whether the guy is just insane. Yeah. And, and I like that mystery being there. Because again, it makes the alien scarier. Like, is he doing that? Like, did the alien make this guy go crazy? Or is he just crazy and seeing the alien broke his mind? Just keep it a mystery. Always keep that's, it a mystery. That's what's scary. It's yeah. what's scary, yeah. Do you know what else is scary, Nisha? The idea that the alien queen, despite it being the biggest creature seen in the alien movies, isn't actually the biggest, baddest alien in the alien's universe. With there being two known casts of alien, scarier, bigger, and more intelligent than the alien queen. What aliens are these? Uh, well, the two aliens that are known as being above even the alien queen are something known as the alien empress, and then you have above even that, the queen mother, which is noted as being the unequivocal ruler of the entire alien species, and as a result, can communicate telepathically with every alien in existence um, from across the galaxy near instantaneously, because that's fair. Jesus. And it's like fucking massive and it is terrifying and it can just dominate the minds of lower life forms like humans and just drive you insane by making you see images of the alien eating you. Which is, yeah, <laughs> yeah fuck that. I don't, want, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want aliens that can make me imagine what the alien can do to me and then I wake up when the alien's right there. Speaking of uh, nightmares, I had a dream last night that I went on the Fact Fiend channel and all the videos had been deleted. <laughs> what? What? Like, I just... <laughs> Like, <laughs> perfectly reasonable, but also quite realistic, like, nightmare to have. Yeah. Like, that reminds me, to a degree, of a story told to me um, when I used to work uh, for an agency. And it was one of those jobs where you had to wake up at, like, the crack of dawn to get on a bus to travel two hours across the country to work at a race course for 12 hours and then come back. Oh, uh, yeah. And one of the guys there told me about this thing that, like, it might be the most depressing thing I've ever heard, where he said... He dreamt that he went to work and did a full 12 hour shift and then woke up and had to go do a 12 hour shift and then came <laughs> back absolutely knackered and had the same dream again. Oh no, that's so, so harsh. And then he had another 12 hour shift the next day. So he just, like, he just in his mind worked for 48 hour shift. It's like, oh no, that's like worse than anything. So at least when you wake up from a scary nightmare where like you're getting attacked by a monster, you can be like, oh, well, at least there's no such thing as monsters. You wake up from like that dream, so now I've got to go to work. But to end on, because, you know, the Aliens universe is quite metal, uh, the Queen Mother is noted as being able to not just, like, you know, telepathically communicate with and torment humans, but even take psychic control of those with particularly weak minds, um, oh. which is completely fair for a creature that has acidic blood, can run at 60 miles per hour, and headbutt its way through a starship hull. So, as mentioned before, this video is again sponsored. Uh, yes, it is, and it was sponsored by a gentleman called Dylan Burrows who wrote a book called Snag, a picture of which you can find behind me. Uh, yeah, really cool guy, just reached out to me and said, yeah, I, I just want people to know about my book. I know you guys like talking about horror movies. I know you especially like discussing unique horror premises. And for anyone curious, the synopsis for the book um, is that a guy um, becomes a logger and shit starts to get real. 
and monsters happen. Ooh. And that's all I know about the book. That's all I care to know because that premise alone is fucking awesome. Because I did not know that lumberjack horror was a genre and that Dylan invented it, but I'm fucking glad that it exists. So in that vein, Nisha, to end on, let's just discuss like interesting uh, premises or concepts introduced in horror movies. And I'm gonna open the floor with a movie I guarantee nobody watching this has ever watched, although they may have heard of it, and that's Lycan Colony. And that is a straight-to-DVD werewolf movie that I am only aware of due to reviews of how bad it is. And the movie itself is terrible. However, there is a key piece of dialogue in that movie I find fascinating and I'm annoyed has not been explored more in other pieces of werewolf fiction. And that is that all the people who are werewolves congregate and live in an old mining town. And you're probably thinking, what does this have to do with being a werewolf? And the answer to that is, the town used to mine silver, meaning there are trace amounts of silver in the water that comes from the mountain, which helps keep their werewolfism at bay. Oh God. <laughs> and I said, the movie's shit, but that idea is so fucking interesting to me. And I adore when people like, you know, just do something that has not been done before. Like Dylan has with the idea of lumberjack horror. Just shit gets real in a logging camp. That's awesome. So, uh, Nisha, in that vein, do you have any like, horror movie concepts or premises you think are quite interesting or unique? There's one that I remember watching, I think I'm probably too young to watch it, when I didn't okay. see it for the first time, was, did you ever see the Puppet Master film? I have not seen the Puppet Master, no. <laughs> but I'm just like looking it up and I realised there's quite a few films, like sequels, that I knew nothing about. I thought there was just one. But um, it's just like these haunted dolls who are being controlled by like puppeteer. Mm -hmm. um, but because it's like an 80s film, it's one of those films you look at now and just kind of laugh at it. But yeah. I can kind of see it being, you can make it's it a little bit cheesy. Like, yeah, it's, it is quite cheesy. But I always quite like the idea of like the haunted dolls and stuff like that. Like, I mean, with Chucky, that again is quite laughable. It is, but the concept itself is very interesting. And if people don't know, the, the, the main hook of Chucky is that a serial killer uses voodoo magic to put his soul into a doll. And the film itself is not great, but the concept is super interesting and unique. And another one for me is the movie Twilight. And I already know people are getting mad and unsubscribing, so just let me explain. Because in the movies, I'm not sure if it's mentioned in the book, but the movies, uh, they have a scene where they show that vampires have to play baseball during thunderstorms because they're so strong <laughs> the sound of them hitting the ball sounds like a thundercrack. <laughs> and the scene is awful, but just that, again, that concept that vampires are so strong, they have to like, find workarounds to how to, how to just, like, you know, take part in basic pastimes. It's yeah. really interesting, and it's something I wish was explored more in like, vampire and monster fiction. It's like, what does a vampire do on his day off? Like, how do creatures that are this strong and live forever pass the time? And that's something Twilight explores, which I think should be commended, if, even if the quality of the movie itself is not that great. I mean, I always quite like the idea of people getting stuck underground or in rocks and oh, stuff God, like I that. I hate those movies. I watched, the Descent. Yeah, The oh. Descent, um, As Above, So Below, that sort of thing. And there's one which is, um, I don't know if you'd call it a horror, mm -hmm. but um, it's based on real life. It's that 127 hours. Oh, yeah, which is just like a... Where he, he gets stuck in a in a, a rock and has to basically cut his own arm off yeah, it's more to of escape. A, it's a thriller, that one, isn't it, uh, more or less? But yeah. yeah, that it just freaks me out being like stuck alone in you know a dark, scary place where you can't move and you can't get out. Underground is a really interesting place to set a horror movie. And again, much in the same way you've got lumberjack horror, potholing horror... It's not something I knew existed, but it's something I'm fucking terrified of now. I never <laughs> want to go into a cave, ever, thanks to The Descent. But, um, yeah, thank you uh, to Dylan for sponsoring this video. I, if you're a fan of the channel and you like horror and you like the sound of um, a short novel where shit gets real at a logging camp, <laughs> um, I invite you and implore you to go check out the link below to the book that Dylan wrote. And then finally, there's a little bit of housekeeping for anyone who's curious about what's happening to the money we've been paid for this sponsorship. Um, some of it's going to the Fact Fiend coffers, and then the rest of it is going to be split evenly between Brad, Nisha, and Lucas. So they all just get a nice bonus, which is, yeah, um, mm. just something I'm glad that I'm able to do. And thank you, Dylan, for making that happen. Yeah, thank you very much.